I was born in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, March 15, 1916. I guess my first memory was uh, the house seemed to be very large. It was a house my grandfather built in the early 1900s, and he lived with us as my mother's father, and he lived with us until he died in 1982. And I can remember that him being on the uh, police force when I was three or four years old, and he uh, built me a little triangular seat in the corner of our fence. And I used to sit on that little seat and talk to everybody that went by. And I can remember very well one time across the street from us lived a people named Deneen. They were German people. And they were bootleggers. And I had heard my mother and father when I was that age, four or five years old, I had heard them say that they were bootleggers. And one day I was sitting on that little seat in the corner of the fence, and I heard I heard them come out the door. And I turned around and, and I hollered at my mama. I said, when I get big, I'm going to get me a pair of boots and be a bootlegger. <laughs> and they all laughed. <laughs> So I, I thought that was real funny. <laughs> and I remember going downtown in downtown uh, Hopkinsville, which wasn't a very big town, and picking up scrap metal and taking it to a place, a man named uh, Fox. Mr. Fox ran a junkyard, and I'd pick up scrap metal and take it to him and sell it, get a nickel or a dime for it. And the Rex Theater played old Western movies. And I can remember my hero was William S. Hart, and Tom Mix, and uh, Tom McCoy, Tim McCoy. They were my favorite cowboys. And I could go in there for a nickel and get a nickel bag of popcorn, which was very large. Uh, an old used tire, Mr. Fox would buy, buy for a dime. The Princess Theater was a little more elite. They charged 15 cents. They were across the street from the Rex Theater. And I remember seeing when I was about probably six or seven years old, Rudolph Valentino, which was, a, uh, he was in a movie called The Sheik. And uh, I can remember going downtown and I, I knew all the good places to go. And I had two sisters that worked in a drugstore called Higgins Drugstore. They were, uh, my sisters were older than, uh, 12, 13 years older than, than me, but they worked as, uh, as waitresses in the Higgins Drugstore. We moved to Nashville in uh, October of 1926. I was uh, a little 10 years old. My dad, it was in the he was a paper hanger and painter. And when I was about 11 years old, he put me to work. I was a paste boy for him. I was a paste boy for him, uh, hanging wallpaper. And we also, we cleaned wallpaper with a a product called Absarine. It was uh, like a dough 
and you'd uh, come in a 10 pound bucket and you'd get a handful of it and knead it in your hands and, and then rub it on the wall and it would take soak up the dirt on the wall and then you'd knead it again to get the dirt in into the the uh, wad of, of abstrains you had in your hands. And I worked with him, he paid me a dollar a day, which is big money. A ten year living me old boy. I worked with him for several years and then he he uh, established a, a window shade cleaning company. And I started helping him then clean window shades. We clean window shades and go in nice homes, clean the wallpaper and hang the wallpaper in the rooms. And I did that for, well, for, from about 11 years old till I was 17 or 18. I was helping in my off days when I didn't go to school. Sadly to say, I only finished the eighth grade and uh, thought I'd rather go to work than go to high school, which was a big mistake I made at the time. I guess it turned out all right. In 1936, I joined the Army. In December 17th, 1936, I was sworn in. And then in uh, January of 1937, I went to Panama Canal Zone, stayed down there for my, my term. Got back home in uh, uh, 1939, April 1939. And in the meantime, in 1936, in August, I had met a young girl named Mildred Mason. And I dated her until December of 1936, about three or four months. And I asked her if I went in the Army, would she wait for me? She said, yes. And she did. I got letters from her down in Panama every, just about every three or four days I'd get a letter from her. And uh, came back in 1939, went to work for Rock City Construction Company, building the North National High School which was, uh, in later years, was torn down. So I got to see it built and torn down. In 1939, Germany invaded Poland, started the Second World War. And I was working for Rock City at the time, and then went to work for Foster and Creighton Company which was another construction company, and they teamed up with an uh, Omen construction company who was a road builder, and Farkham and James, which was also a road builder, and I spent from about 19, early 1940 until uh, 1945 when the war ended before Boston Crate. I worked on uh, about 14 or 15 uh, different jobs and uh, kept getting deferrals and finally uh, the latter part of 1945 I was working in Halls, Tennessee and uh, I got a notice from the draft board and I told Mildred, my wife, I said, I'm just going to go ahead and, and let them draft me and go and get this over with. So she said, well, okay, if that's what you want. I came back to Nashville, went to the draft board, got my papers, went to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia, and they examined me, and I... I told uh, 
He was a, a soldier and a sailor and a Marine sitting at a desk and I said, I told the sailor, I said, I've done a hitch in the Army. I want to do another hitch in the Navy. He said, well, we'll see about that. Well, uh, I went on back to the, the barracks and about two o'clock in the afternoon, a uh, messenger came over and said, they want to see you in the office. I said, oh boy. I went back and uh, I met with the doctor. He said, uh, well, I said, we're sorry to tell you, but said, you've been rejected and you got a spot on your lungs. Well, that scared me to death. So that, I knew I had TB. And at that time, I was smoking, of course. I came back the next day, I came back to Nashville, real downhearted. And uh, I was real upset about it. I went to my doctor, and he laughed. He said I could go out on the street and pick ten people, and nine of them would have a spot on their lawn. Well, that made me feel much better. But we went on with the test, the sputum test and a, and a blood test, and it came back, I did not have TB. Well, that made me feel real good. And I went back to Hall, Tennessee, went back on the job down there where we were building the, the Di Dyersburg, Advanced Air Bomber Base. When the uh, pilots from there, they, they flew, they flew uh, B-25 bombers, and when they graduated from there, they went directly overseas. That was Advanced Base. I worked for them for uh, until. Uh, I guess in ni about 1945, I was, I was working here in Nashville on a Goodyear rubber plant. They were building tires for uh, uh, the Army and, they, and Marines, whatever. And the war ended. And uh, I wanted to stay with the uh, with Foster and Creighton, it was a good company to work for. And I told the superintendent that I was going to work at the shop, which was here in Nashville, and I'd be at home. And he said, no, you're going to, with uh, me to Memphis, back to Memphis. I'd been in Memphis for about eight months working. And he said, you're going back to Memphis with me. I said, no. He said, well, you can't work for Foster and Creighton. 